for your study. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to see how this works. I uh, it's a little a little cooler outside, so I went ahead and I turned on the furnace. We'll see how it works with the when it comes on, but it shouldn't affect the sound that much on the camera because the microphone is right there. So hopefully that'll work a little better than trying to run the heat pump because it kept giving me the DF, which means defrost, which means the thing outside is getting a little too cold for it so to run. But we knew that was gonna come up sooner or later. So uh, bear with us. Those of you watching online, thank you. Uh, I don't know why we had a glitch just a minute ago and it shut off and we had to turn it back on, uh, but hopefully we got that fixed. Uh, we're going to look at a couple of things uh, as we get ready to go into 2021 to upgrade uh, the way we do our audio uh, for our camera system so that we don't have to worry about the external sound and stuff messing with it. It'll be directly tied in. And uh, also we're looking at uh, something that I've been thinking about is uh, we have that TV sitting right back there that's not doing anything and I'm sitting there thinking, uh, now, uh, just bear with me folks, now listen, you'd have to tune in. On a, on a Monday night or a Friday night to see it. But on Monday night on USA Network or Friday night on Fox, uh, Vince McMahon and the World Wrestling Entertainment has done something amazing because they're not allowed to have fans inside the arenas, right? You can't have fans show up. But they still put on their events. So you know what they did? They built in the stands LED walls into the stands in the arena and people could call in on like a Zoom conference and they turn their webcam on on their computer and they're in the arena watching the show but they're in their house so you get to see their their stuff so i'm sitting there thinking how come michael up in canada it's one thing to log on on facebook and maybe interact that way on the video but why can't he log on via a zoom conference and we can have him right on that tv screen <laughs> sitting right back there facing so people can see michael they can wave at him he can wave at them you can greet him you can everything you going to roll that up there when you want to like have them both. When I want to make fun of them, of course I will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then other people can, and we get with the Zoom, we could have multiple people calling in and video chatting through their webcam on their computer right there on that TV, and they could be that TV can sit back there and it'll be just like Amen. they're in the service with us, and we can interact with them. Wow, Amen. let's do it. So, you know, I, I, uh, it, it, this goes with my message. It's one reason why I stopped the, the worship. I, I, I really felt like, okay, let's just go ahead and skip that last song and, because I got some important stuff I want to talk about today. Uh, before we get into our offering, uh, I want to reiterate a couple of things. As you noticed, uh, one slide did change. Uh, we are, uh, in 2021, we are endeavoring to, to move from Badger Ministry Network, what we use uh, as our overarching for a lot of our external stuff, to Northland Ministry Network. So that way we can encompass Carlstad and everything else and the different ministry opportunities that we have coming up. Uh, 2021, uh, we are looking at, uh, with our program that we're going to do in Carlstad with internships and campus pastors, actually looking at launching at least a Bible study group in Greenbush. So it would not just be Badger and Carlstad, it would be Badger, Greenbush, and Carlstad. And, and uh, uh, don't don't tempt me because Lancaster and Strandquist and those other places may not be far behind. So uh, when we're looking at Northland, uh, if, we, if we're going to bring interns in and house them at the Carl Center, we might as well give them something to do, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, so if no no longer so yes, this is still Badger Baptist Church, but our overarching thing, the Badger Ministry Network, is now going to transform to Northland Ministry Network because. We believe God is calling us to do more than just impact here, but to take what God has done here and spread it out. Also, remember we have The Chosen coming up on Wednesday nights. Of course, the Wednesday before Christmas, we probably will skip that one because I believe Christmas is what? Christmas is Friday. So that's that's cutting it really close. And you know, I know you guys probably all wait to the last minute to do all your shopping and everything. So, And you know, you got some cooking and some baking to do. Uh, Pastor loves pumpkin, sweet potato, pecan, apple pie, uh, cherry pie. Uh, let's see. Peanut you know what? Butter balls. I've been uh, peanut butter balls. I, I love those peanut butter balls with the chocolate. Yeah, I love those. Uh, uh, I love Russian tea cakes. I love shortbread cookies. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I have been known to eat, even eat mincemeat pie. So you know, it's uh, uh, my my grandmother made mincemeat pie every Christmas. So, uh, so you know. So I'm willing, I'm willing to give you that extra Wednesday just for that. 
So, but come and join us and, and watch the chosen. I think we had a great discussion afterwards talking about the development of the disciples. Uh, if you missed week one, it is okay. Uh, you can still jump in at week two and still really catch the uh, the full gist of things. And the last but not least, tonight, well, two more things. Tonight, our first of our master class series, uh, we will be talking about this we believe. We're going to break down scripturally uh, what we believe. Uh, we're going to go through our what we call our, our spirit-led ministry model and our core values. So when you leave here tonight, you should have great ammunition when people say, well, what is that church all about? You're going to know exactly what we're about and not just what we're about, but you're going to know why we're about that. Uh, that's the thing. A lot of people, they, they can tell you what they're about, but they can't tell you the why. And when we get to the why, then it gets deeper. When we fully understand why we believe this, it gets deeper. And, you know, this is the perfect time to talk about doctrine. You know that? Because you, you, you all know St. Nicholas, right? Santa Claus? St. Nicholas? You know him? You know what he's famous for, right? Yep. He's not famous for running down chimneys and dropping presents off to people. He's right. famous for it at the Council of Nicaea. They were arguing the Trinity, and he got up and he slapped Joseph Arius across the face. So uh, don't let, don't mess Santa Claus. Don't don't get you know don't make him mad because Saint Nicholas is known to slap you. So this is a perfect time, right? Because we're talking about Saint Nicholas and Christmas. This is a perfect time to talk about doctrine, right? So we'll be doing that tonight. So join us with those. And then last but not least, starting in February, we are we've already got one guy, uh, Troy. He's not here today. He's probably I know he's got work and. And everything else and still recovering from his car accident but he was with us yesterday at men's bible study and he called me while i was in super one the other day he is on fire to join the 33 this year so uh <laughs> pray about that uh, i saw a, a person post something the other day uh about fatherhood and what we project i showed it to the guys yesterday but what we project and what we really have we project everything's fine but inside we internalize everything and the way to solve that is connection with other men who can can interact with you and help you and show you uh, 60 plus years of marriage and what it looks like. Who can show you survival like that. So be sure to link in. Uh, we are willing to do it on any day of the week necessary to get people involved. We'll do it one-on-one. -on -one. We'll do it groups. We don't care. But we want you to be intentionally engaged in all 42 weeks of the program. So, uh, with that, we're going to worship through our giving. Of course, because of COVID, we can't, we don't pass the plate. We try to be respectful. So you can give in the box in the back, the box up here in the front, or the mailbox outside, or Christian, go ahead and hit the slide, please. Or our online giving one more uh, at www.badgerbaptist.simplesite.com. Click on the giving link and just follow the instructions there. You can give either one time or a recurring gift. All you need is your email address, so we'll send your tax receipt for you right then. Uh, that is, is a great tool. Uh, we have been blessed. Thank you, LifeWay, for giving it to us free. I mean, we still have to pay the, the credit card fees, but we don't have the maintenance fees on top of it. Because normally when you get these, these giving sites at churches, you have the, the, the site fee plus the credit card fees. So all we have to worry about is the fee for processing the credit cards. And what's nice is it actually gives you the option, the giver, if you log on to give, it gives you the option if you want to round your, your giving up to cover what the fee would be. So the church doesn't have to take the fee from there. So, so that's a blessing too. So use that option if you want to. If not, again, we have three locations here. Uh, before we go into our prayer time, you might have noticed something different up front. Today is the first Sunday of the month. We will be having communion, and we have our nice brand new COVID-friendly communion elements. Woo! So that way nobody has to be touching all, this, all the, the, the bread and everything. It's all self-contained. Uh, I'm going to warn you, the, the, the wafer is, if you remember the old school Catholic or Lutheran, those little wafers that come and wafers, that's the wafer. So, what it may do is it may make you pray hard for COVID to end so you can get back to the oyster crackers. <laughs> so, so, with that, Christian, next slide, please. We are going to jump into our prayer time real fast. Uh, I know I'm talking pretty quick for, a, I'd say a country boy, but I don't know. Maybe I am a little country sometimes. But, uh, but like I said, I have a lot of stuff on my heart I want to unpack, and we do have communion, and I want to be, be, be faithful with our time and everything. 
So we're gonna jump into our prayer time. We know right, right off the bat, we have our COVID issues. Uh, we have our election issues. At least some people have election issues. Other people may not have election issues. I've got a couple of requests. Yes, um, sir. Maybe continue praying for Lily. She's actually uh, uh, dealing with a loss, family member. Um, I've got a friend in Oklahoma that I consider pretty much a daughter. She had a, a prison stint for drugs, everything. She's out. She's reunited with her children. She's doing really good. Um, I talked to her earlier this morning, and she feels like she's um, fixing to have a setback, but I told her that we would continue to pray for her. And uh, also, I don't ask for myself very often, but uh, pray for me. I've been dealing with a lot of issues myself. Um, just uh, things that are personal to me, and I just need to pray. We all need a son time, Gordon. Now, again, that's going to go right into today's message, too. I'm forward to today's message. Yes, Lord. Which uncle? Anybody else have any prayer request? Yeah. Prayer for my sister. She should be getting results back for her uh, PET scan Tuesday. Pray that the results are good. Also pray that she has made it through this last year. Considering all she's gone through. Yes. Mm -hmm. Getting a little closer to the big man. So pray. Yes. Ah, uh, good question. I slipped on the ice yesterday. Oh, Drew, ice. yes. And I guess from what he was saying, he used the back to back. Yeah. Thank you for mentioning that because it actually came up in the uh, the chat on the uh, the church's page. Somebody else had mentioned that as well. So thank you for, for reminding me. Yeah. So that was Drew. He slipped on the ice. He had to go to the ER. He's had two seizures already. So. We've got a couple on the Facebook. Yes. Prayer for Sue's sister-in-law. Yes, she had her pacemaker redone again. Recovering from the surgery. Yep. Also for Sue, Dave, and Amber. Reconciliation and just stopping apart. Um, Rachel has a crate. Her newest baby was struggling to gain weight. So she had to be put in the hospital for a few days and she's now gaining weight and she's coming home later. Awesome. Awesome. That's Rachel Hill. So, yes. That's a phrase in itself. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Yes, my granddaughter, Alyssa, is at a doctor's appointment tomorrow and um, that all will go well. Pray for me. I've been really having some hard days with the holidays coming up, and part of me just wants to dig a hole and crawl in there. So I told you about that already. <laughs> We're gonna find you. Don't dig in the frozen ground. I'll say this: people who are that way don't get to come to my house today and eat ham and sweet potatoes. Uh -oh. <laughs> I know. I'm going to get happy. Nita. <laughs> yes. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, Nita has suffered a lot. A break for her. Yeah. Uh, Nita Borison, uh, where, where Tracy and I work at the group home, she's just had one heck of a year. Let's we'll put it that way. She's lost her mother, her former husband, her, uh, her brother, of course, was the one who went to prison for the homicide of the manslaughter here in, in, in Badger on New Year's Day. She has just had one, one issue after the other, and uh, 
she watches regularly, and you know she's one of those ones who she she's on me because she misses the lunchbox devotionals because that was one of her favorite things. So, so do I. <laughs> uh, well, prayerfully, once things calm down, and you know we get we we'll get ready to start those back up. So yes, definitely let's pray for Dina. Uh, anybody else? I'm a lost Tara. Yes, Tara, right? Uh, cheap plug, if you want to go buy any homemade stuff, uh, farmer's market type things, or to a thrift shop, go to see the Frog's Pond in Lake Bronson and, and ask them. In Helma, yes, in Helma. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, talk about brilliant business. Since you can't use the restaurant, convert your restaurant to a thrift shop and a, a store selling homemade jams and jellies and stuff like that. Why haven't we? I agree. <laughs> So we should take a church field no. trip down there. <laughs> All right. Well, there's always we just got to brought one of those little trees. So cheap plug, cheap plug. Uh, any other prayer requests, Roger? I, I got to praise. Well, I got to praise. praise. I got to praise. Hallelujah! I got to praise. Praise the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost that He gives you Scripture <laughs> to inspire you in times of trouble. And not good things happen in your life. Yes. I will give two examples. Joel 11, 13, 11 through 13, chapter 2. And first, 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 7. For anybody that wants to look in there Joel and 11, find 11. out some encouragement from the good Lord. 11 what? Joel 2, Joel 2 11 through 13. Oh, 2, 11 through 13. Uh, I'm going to add uh, Troy and Megan uh, onto our list. <laughs> Uh, we had a, I tell you what, I think we had a great time with Troy yesterday. Oh my goodness. We had an amazing time with Troy yesterday. Oh, Bible study. You know, it was men's breakfast, and it was four of us, but we only had two breakfasts. Second, uh, Corinthians 1, 3 through 7. Troy, bless his heart. You know, he, he, he can't eat anything, yes, anything that we eat. So he didn't have breakfast, but boy, the, 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 the bread that was broken was way better than the breakfast that we got. So, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> uh, I, I told my wife the story last night because I knew with my wife's situation with her mom it would minister to her. But it was it was it was a blessing. Yes, ma'am, Miss Gordon. Has anybody heard anything from Richard? No, we have not. Uh, but on that same note, thank you because uh, Todd Jr., uh, Todd, the Todd's son, uh, had uh, an emergency appendectomy the other day. And he had to be taken to ICU afterwards for his oxygen levels. Uh, Todd did post late yesterday that he, his oxygen levels have returned. And, he, and, and, and little Todd, well, little Todd is dating my son back there, uh, <laughs> is back to a regular room recovering and re getting ready to go home. So then there's a, a praise for recovery and just a prayer for continued help for, he, technically, Todd the second. So. Yes, sir. I've got a praise. Um, I like praises. <laughs> uh, Carly and her son are able to come out of quarantine. Their test came back negative. Oh, awesome. <clears throat> That's going to go to today's message, too. Anybody else before we break? I'll take a praise, especially from you, Lily. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> you know that 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 right there. Two weeks too. There, there you go. You know what? You overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. Preach it. Preach Just it saying now. that is Woo! victory. Amen. <laughs> Don't get him started, Gloria. Uh, Roman uh, Revelations. 11-12. Don't get my dyslexia going. I know it's 12-11, 11-12. Don't get my dyslexia going. Anybody else? And then we're going to break. Those of you watching online, if you have a prayer request and you haven't sent it in, send it in. If you're watching this on demand later on, be sure to get it in. We will still pray for you. And as you know, we do go back and we, we check because we do get the alerts when new comments come on, even on the on-demand section. So uh, let us know. So with that, let's pray. And let's just believe in a corporate way that God is going to move in an amazing way. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you today for this ability that we have to come together to, to worship, to join together as a family of believers. Lord, today we just lift up our nation and the situations that, that are, are, are strangling the, the, the people of this country, Lord, from, from COVID to social justice and unrest. 
to the election, Lord, that we just pray that your will will be done, that your Holy Spirit will hover across the face of this nation. And Lord, out of the chaos, salvation will come. Lord, we just thank you right now that you are working in our midst, Lord. Lord, we just pray for, for Lily and the family, Lord, for dealing with the loss of an uncle. Lord, we pray for strength for their family. Lord, we pray for James. We pray for Sarah. We pray for Brad, Lord. Lord, we just pray for strength in their life, Lord. Yeah. We pray that, that, that your Holy Spirit will grab a hold of them in such a way that they will be empowered and emboldened to stand up and choose this day whom they will serve. And, and gladly say, we will serve the Lord. Lord, Lord, I just pray for their continued strength and support, Lord. Lord, for Gordon's friend in Oklahoma, Lord, we just pray for strength for her life, Lord, for, yes. for people to come along beside yes. her, to yes. give Gordon the words, to give other yes. people a burden on their hearts to come along beside of her and support her and lift her up in this time of need, in this time of, of feeling like she may lose a grip on what she's accomplished. Yes. Lord, for Gordon, Lord, for, for all the things that they going through, through spirit, soul, body, mentally, physically, emotionally, yes. relationally, Lord, yes. wherever Gordon is hurting, yes. wherever he is yes. struggling, wherever he is dealing with, 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 with a situation, Lord, we just pray that your Holy Spirit will come in and guide him and direct him and bring him peace, comfort, and the answers that he is seeking. Lord, for Linda and her, her test results, so we just pray for a positive test result. We pray for, for a good report for her, Lord. And we praise you, Lord, that, that even through this struggle, even through this trial of cancer, yes. that, that it is drawing her closer to you. Yes. It is opening up her eyes and her heart yes. to, to something bigger than her. Lord, I thank you that Tracy has been there to, to minister in the subtle ways yes. and enter into those gaps yes. for Linda. Lord, for our brother Drew who slipped yesterday and has had a couple of seizures, Lord, we pray for healing and strength in his body, Lord. We pray that he knows that, that he has a family who, who supports him, Lord. Lord, we may not always agree on every issue. We may not always see everything eye to eye. But, Lord, as the body of Christ, we are connected, Lord. Yeah. For Sue's sister-in-law recovering from the pacemaker surgery, Lord, yeah. we just pray that, that, she, that, this, that this would be the one, that this is the one that causes the healing. This is the one that brings peace and resolution to this struggle that she's been dealing with. Lord, for yeah. Sue and Dave and Amber, yeah. Lord, we pray for reconciliation. We pray for restoration. Yeah. Lord, we pray for hearts to be softened, for, for people to open up with their hurts and their worries and for you to be able to step in and heal wounds yeah. and restore hearts. Lord, we thank you for Rachel yeah. for joining with us on H Church today. Lord, we just thank you for her. Mm -hmm. Lord, we just pray, we, we just give you praise that her, her young one was able to start gaining weight and is able to yeah. come home. Yes, Lord, we just, we just looked up uh, Patty's granddaughter, Alyssa, and her doctor's appointment. Lord, we pray for a good report. Lord, we pray for answers. We pray for, for health and healing. Lord, we just lift up my mom and, and the struggle. We just, Lord, let her know that, that she is not alone. That's right. And Lord, let her know that Frank is not alone. That's right. Hallelujah. Mm. Lord, let her know that it is okay. Mm. Lord, give her a peace. Mm -hmm. Lord, for Nita and the struggles that she's been going through. Lord, we just pray for strength for Nita. We just pray for. For, for you to come along beside Lord. Give Tracy and I the words to, to minister to her when, when we have the opportunities. Yeah. Lord, I just thank you that, that you have you have placed her in our path where we can help lift her up yeah. through all these hard times. Yeah. For Tara at the Frog Pond, Lord, who has questions yeah. and doubts. Yeah. Lord, I pray that you bring the answers to her. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, I pray that you, you open up her heart with your Holy Spirit to continue to ask questions. To not be afraid to ask the questions. Lord, I thank you that your Holy Spirit is still inspiring us. Mm -hmm. I thank you that your Holy Spirit is still directing us and guiding us to the answers, to the, to the scripture. Yes. Thank you. To your word that's showing us the answers. That, that, that maybe we've read it a million times before, but we've never seen the answer there. But today, mm. we thank you that your Holy Spirit is enlightening, enlightening us. And guiding us. Lord, we pray for our, our new family members, Troy and Megan. Yes, sir. And their family. The baby, Troy's mom getting ready to go into a nursing home. Lord, Troy's accident. Lord, we just pray that you continue to strengthen his body. Yes, sir. Lord, I thank you for Troy's heart. 
Yes. His willingness to come yesterday and be vulnerable and share. Yes. Thank you. Lord, I thank you <coughs> that you have provided a place like this for men to come to and say, look, I got, I, I, I've struggled. I've had problems. I, I'm not afraid to shed a tear. Lord, I thank you for that. I just pray, Lord, that you continue to strengthen their family. Yeah. Lord, you continue to strengthen Megan on her journey of faith. Yeah. Lord, that you would bring women into her path who will help support her. And they will be the errands and the hers to her. So that as her battle keeps going, they will be there to lift her hands. Lord, we, we just praise you for the, the, the healing for Todd II. Yeah. Lord, we thank you that, that, that he is doing better, that, that his situation is turning. Lord, we just praise you that you have answered prayers. Lord, we praise you for Carly and her son and the negative <coughs> test result that they can come out of quarantine. Yeah. Lord, you are a God who brings us out. You are a God who brings us out. And Lord, I thank you for Lily. Yeah. Lord, I thank you for the courage of Lily's testimony. Lord, I thank you that two weeks is just the start. You have a lifetime of victory laid out for her. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you that you are moving in our midst. Lord, we, we pray for Richard. We pray for Michael in Canada. We pray for our brothers and sisters of different churches who are, who are, are disconnected right now because of the situation. But we just pray, we just pray right now that you will create these opportunities for Lord. Lord, we just pray that you will give us the wisdom and the guidance to add new things and try new things to connect more people with you. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I have another very important prayer request. Yes. My sister Joy um, is having some kind of um, right imbal imbalance, and it's causing her to not be able to eat, not be able to sleep. She has panic attacks. I know that happened last week. And she was in the Rosa Hospital last weekend. And, uh, and now she's going to Fargo. Yeah. No, let's pray. Let's pray for that right now. Let's pray for that right now. Heavenly Father, we just lift up joy. Lord, for whatever this medical issue, whatever this imbalance is, Lord, you are not a God of imbalance. You are a God of balance. Lord, your word says you bring perfect peace, not imbalanced peace. You bring purpose, perfect peace. And right now, Lord, we just call perfect balance. In the joy's life, we call yeah. we call help and healing into her life, Lord. However, your will may bring it about, whether it be through the doctors in Fargo or whether it be through the miraculous, Lord. You are a God who brings balance, and Lord, we just pray that right now in the joy's life, yeah. Lord. Whatever this issue is, we break it in the name of Jesus, yeah. Lord. We just thank you that you are a God who heals, yeah. Lord. I thank you. That you are Jehovah Nisi, that you are the God, my banner, a God who shows victory to those around us. Lord, I just praise you and I give you glory that you are bringing victory into Joy's life right now in Jesus' name. Amen. So, you got to, you don't give away all the answers, all right? And this, you already heard this message at Carl's that day. <laughs> Double dipping. <laughs> so, all right. Where to begin? I was all set to begin a series this week called The Names of God, going through Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Tiskanu, uh, all these different names and the importance of the names and, and how they relate, relate, relate to the name. But then in the words of the great theologian Phil Collins, something happened on the way to heaven. And uh, I got swerved. And so I, I put this message together because I think, it, I think it is important for today. Uh, in the mid-1900s, there was a Polish scientific survey done. 
And what they did was they took two babies who were born on the exact same day. And they took baby A and they put baby A in this room and baby B in that room. Baby A, they, they nurtured, they, they, they paid attention to, they, 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 they rocked it and carried it and all those things. And they fed it and they put the diapers on it, all those things. Baby B, they fed it and changed the diapers. Baby B got the minimal, what you need, just enough to live. Diapers and change. What they found was after a year, baby A had developed faster than baby B. That there was something to the other things. That there was a need beyond just a bottle and a diaper. That yes, you can develop with just a bottle and a diaper, but your development is going to be delayed. It is going to be impeded. It is going to be... Uh, Diminished, okay, uh, for lack of a better word. And so I, I'm, I'm thinking about that, and the stuff that came up this week and stuff that I've dealt with, I, I, again, I don't want to get into specifics because of laws and stuff like that, but I know on Thanksgiving night, uh, a lady who was told that she wasn't allowed to, I, I know, dear. Don't worry, I don't, I'm not going to mention names. But we'll just say that a, a lady tried to commit suicide Thanksgiving night. After being told she couldn't have contact with anybody. She had to have Thanksgiving dinner at home by herself. But that wasn't bad enough. She did, She tried. She's alive. That's, praise God for that. But on Wednesday... We see the report in Lodi, California, an hour north of where my wife and I are from and my mom are from in California. An 11-year-old boy shot himself in the head during a Zoom classroom. Distance learning. Praise God he had his camera and his microphone muted so his class didn't have to see it. But his sister, who was in the next room, did not. So her class got to at least hear the gunshot and the scream as she ran out of her house because her parents weren't there and pounded on the neighbor's door until somebody came and brought assistance and an ambulance came. Well, that young boy didn't survive. He was 11 years old. And so my fear is this, that in our fight against COVID, and I'm gonna, let, me, let me preface this, that I do believe that COVID is real. I do believe that COVID-19 is a real virus that really affects people in different ways. We've seen it affect folks in our church, and we've seen it affect them in different ways. Uh, I, again, we saw what happened with Richard, and he seemed to like brush it right off. But when I saw Leroy on Thanksgiving Day, he looked like a shell of Leroy. He did not look like the Leroy that I knew. So we know it affects people, and it's a real thing. But my fear is, is that in our fight, in our fear of COVID... We are dying other ways. And so today, I have this message. So, uh, Christian, hit the, hit the slide so you see the slide there. My new little toy. Look at that. Ooh, graphics. Look at that. I added the video to it. The power of a touch. We're in a society today where every time we turn on the news, we turn on the TV, we, we get the things, we get the graphics from the state. You know, uh, stay away, don't touch, get, get back, isolate. What, what, what is it? Stay home, stay safe, Minnesota. California just went down on a, a huge lockdown again. I heard a person say on the TV a couple weeks ago, you know, it, a big Thanksgiving leads to a small funeral for Christmas. We're in a society where this is where we're at. I just want to show you some scriptures that I think speak differently. Yes, we have to be prudent. But I think we also have to understand that there is something else that we need to do. So Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. I'm going to start in verse 18. And the Lord 
God said, it is not good that man should be alone. We preach this as a marriage thing all the time. We use this in marriage counseling, pre-marriage counseling. It's not good for man to be alone. But let's look at what God does. I will make him a helper compared to him. And look at what God did. Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was his name. So Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. So we read this and we read it backwards. We think God then created everything. And then, then he looked at Adam, oh, he's not good for Adam to be alone, so he make a woman. No, he saw Adam being alone, and then he created everything. He made all these animals run out, run out. And so, not trying to be flippant, but putting Grandma in an in a old folks' home and giving her a cat and thinking that's going to be okay is not okay. Do you see God tried that? Okay, Adam, well, let me make you some cows. Let me make you some dogs. Let me make you some cats. Let me make you some pets. And see if that works. And you know what God found out? They're nice. But they don't solve the problem of being alone. Amen. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. And then the, then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman. And he brought her to the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And she shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Now, again, we use this for marriages. We use it talking about wedding. Uh, let's be honest. I guess I mean, you have a young one in the room. But we use this to talk about the intimacy of the honeymoon, right? That they're going to be joined together and become one flesh. But we understand that the word... Knowing in Hebrew is yada, right? Well, can I tell you that's not the same word here? He's not talking about sexual activity. Let's go back. First, let's look at this word here. In verse 18, it's not good for man to be alone. That word in the Hebrew, don't give it away. That, he, that word in the Hebrew, the English translation of that word in the Hebrew is this word right here. Are you ready? Bad. Bad. B-A-D. Quite simply, I'm sorry, Governor Walls, Governor Newsom, President-elect supposedly Biden, but isolation alone is bad. That's Bible. That's not just me. It's bad. It's in a state of separation. It's being by oneself. But we go down to verse 24, and in the, in the King James Version, it says that therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. That word cleave in the Hebrew is debak. It means to keep close. It doesn't mean anything about sex. It means to have proximity with. To have somebody that you're close to. See, we've turned it into something that it's not. God understood at creation that man needs something to be close to and that something needs to be someone. Again, alone is bad. I used this example in Carl said, but I use it at the end and I think it'll fit here when you talk about we need somebody to be close to. Uh, right now, uh, my cell phone is connected to the Wi-Fi in this building. But when I drive out of this, walk out of this building and I start walking towards the diner or the post office, and by the time I get to the corner, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to lose connection because I've lost proximity. I'm not close anymore. The longer we stay in isolation and we lose proximity, the faster and easier it is to lose connection. Amen. And God created all this beauty. But the one thing he said was wrong or was bad and not good 
was man having a lack of connection. And we're saying man, we're saying mankind. We're saying mankind. We're not saying man in the, the simple just male, female sense. Hebrews chapter 4. We see the writer of Hebrews telling us, giving us the nature of who Jesus is in the resurrection. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all places tempted as we are, yet without sin. That word sympathize in the Greek, some translations say you cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. That word sympathize in the Greek is the word sympatho. And it means to be touched with our feelings. So Bob, there's a touch that's beyond physical. There's a touch that doesn't happen by fit, doesn't necessarily have to be physical contact. But when we connect with our feelings, when we connect with our emotions, when we connect with our feelings, there, there, there is a touch that happens there that transcends the physical touch. And we have a high priest in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who unlike the high priest of that day, who you couldn't touch because you would make him unclean to do his job. Jesus is saying, you know what? You can touch me. I'm not afraid of your issues. I'm not afraid of your problems. I'm not, I'm not afraid of you making me unclean. You know what's going to happen? You touching me is not going to make me unclean. You touching me is going to clean you up. So touch me. But today again, the clarion call of our society is don't touch. Stay six feet apart. NFL teams on the practice field during gameplay, it's different. But when they practice during the week and in their facilities, you know, they, they do practice now by Zoom. Each player has to be in a different room. Each player has to be in a different room. So you have 11 players on offense in 11 different rooms watching on a Zoom meeting. They have a meeting, the game plan for the next day. Plus, when they're actually on the practice field, they wear these bracelets that alarm themselves if they get within six feet of somebody else. Alarms go off. You got too close. Get back. We have people getting on TV that have degrees saying, if you go outside and you touch somebody, grandma's going to die. Hey, 11-year-old boy in Lodi, don't go to school and play with your friends or play on a playground or sit in a classroom because you may catch something from a friend and kill your grandmother. These are this, and you think that sounds absurd? I have heard these statements come out of people's mouths with degrees on the news. I have heard people with doctor in front of their name and a bunch of letters after their name saying these things. And here's Jesus saying, no, 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 no. It's not good for this. You need connection. So let me get to the main part of my, my text. That was just the, that was the, the shrimp appetizer. <laughs> uh, or if you're like me, that was the uh, cream cheese wontons in egg rolls. Luke chapter 8. Some of my favorite passages in the Bible. I, I've probably preached these passages a million different ways. Matter of fact, we were joking yesterday about uh, highlighting the Bible. If you look at my Bible, I got multiple colors because each time something else has stuck out to me, I've highlighted it in a different color. So, Luke chapter 8, we're going to start in verse 40. There's a part of me that I, I'm praying in season 2 that they do this scene in The Chosen. Well, I'll give you a heads up if you show up for I think it's see episode four. No, episode five. So in like four more weeks. Uh, 
there's a powerful scene of touch in that episode. Not that the scene with him touching Mary Magdalene at the end of episode one wasn't powerful. Spoiler alert for those who didn't watch it. So, chapter 8, starting verse 40. So it was when Jesus returned that the multitude welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and begged him to come to his house. For he had an only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she was dying. But as he went, the multitudes thronged to him. They thronged him. Hey, Christian, can you do me a favor? Can you bring me my cell phone real fast, please? We're going to do a little biblical hermeneutics here real fast. Uh, I didn't look at this word beforehand. Thank you. Anyway, that's my, my son, Christian. We wave to him on the camera. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to pull up a program here on my phone real fast. I'm going to look up a word that I didn't do it last night. And I don't know why, but I think maybe the Holy Spirit wanted to, to save it for uh, a real-time event. Let's see here. Let me look this word up. Do you guys think I know all these Greek words off the top of my head? Uh. <laughs> okay, I'm going to leave that right there so we can get back to it. I'm going to compare that word to something here in a minute, okay? So that was verse 42. So verse 43. <laughs> now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years who had spent all of her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any came from behind and touched the border of his garment. Remember that word, touched the border of his garment. And immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, who touched me? <laughs> when all denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitudes throng and press you, and you say, who touched me? But Jesus said, somebody touched me, for I perceive power going out from me. Now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said to her, Daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Now, let's look at this. Verse 44. She touched him. That word touched in the Greek is the word hapto. Get this here. It means to put one thing to another. As to kindle a fire. It's not just a touch. Because if we go back to what I'm going to look at. Because he was about amongst the crowd. Who were touching him right. They were, there was a throng of crowd. Pressing him. Well that word throng. Has nothing to do with kindling a fire. This is a specific touch. A touch that was separate. From all the other touches. There was a lot of touching going on, but there was one touch that started a fire. That word throng is uh, sampingo in the Greek. And it means compression. A touch that just compresses. There was, there was no power in this touch. There was nothing in this touch. And I only tell you that there's no significance that just to show you that there was a difference here. There was a touch that made a difference. Okay, she touched him, verse 44, in the Greek, the hapto, to put one thing to another, to kindle, to set a fire. I think of men, and I think of this 33, the series, and we use, for men's ministry, we use iron sharpens iron as our example all the time. That's the scripture that people use for men's ministry. Well, the thing is, Gordon, you can be waving a knife there, and I can wave a knife here, and unless those two knives touch and start rubbing against each other, no sharpening is happening. There is something about the touch that brings the power. Jesus didn't respond with the generic, well, somebody pressed up against me. No, he responded with the exact same word. Somebody started a fire here. Can you imagine the, the disciples? But master, there's a lot of people touching you. And Jesus says, yeah, but I felt the heat from one. <coughs> And what happened to this woman? Christian, hit the next slide. Brings us to our first point. The first point is this. 
Touch has the power to heal and to save. Because he goes back down further, and in verse 48, he says, He said, Her daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. In the King James, it says, Your faith has made you whole. That word whole, made whole in the Greek, is catch it. This word sozo. It is the same word that we use for salvation. When you see Jesus say, You, you shall be saved. Or, or, or Paul in Romans talking about salvation and being saved. That Greek word is the word sozo, S-O-Z-O. And he's telling you this woman, this touch, this touch that you had, this, the, 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 you came up and you touched me. Your touch had the power to heal you and to save you. In a touch, that power to purify comes. In a touch, that power to purge comes. We pray, we pray, we pray. Oh God, start a fire in me. I was gonna, I was gonna put in the the the, the, the chorus today the, for praise and worship. I was gonna put a Jesus culture, set a fire in my soul. You know, it just repeats that over and over again. You know, let it rage and make me whole. I want more of you, God. It just repeats it over and over and over again. I sat, I sat talking about. It. I said, no, I don't want to do that. You know why? Because that, that's kind of wrong. Because Roger. We sit around all day long and we pray for God. God, bring a revival to the Northland. Bring a revival. 218 for Jesus. Bring God, bring revival. Set fire to the Northland. Bring the fire of your Holy Spirit to the Northland. And maybe God's saying, why don't you start touching? Because he didn't bring the fire to the woman. The woman brought the fire with her touch. But today, today... These are our words today. All synonyms for what God said was bad are our words for today. Does it mean go out and be reckless? Does it mean go out and, and, and act crazy? No, that's not what I'm talking about. Because again, I'm not talking about it. Lord, I'm not talking that it has to be a physical touch, but there has to be a connection. There, there has to be this closeness, this proximity, this thing that says, yes, we are together. I'm going to tell you something right now. It, it, yes, there is, there is a, a way that you can be together and separate, but that is not how it was supposed to work. It's supposed to work. We are together. It has a power to heal, the power to save. The word sozo denotes more than the woman just being healed physically. But that touch healed her emotionally, mentally, spiritually. Relationally, hey, once she was healed, because she, uh, guess what, folks? Because of where she was bleeding from, she didn't have relations before. Now she can. One touch. Turn this entire woman's life around. One touch. That's the power of a touch. Let's read on, verse 49. While he was still speaking, someone came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, uh, your daughter's dead. Don't trouble, teacher. Hey, you know what? Your daughter died. No reason for Jesus to come. It's over. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, uh, don't be afraid. Only believe, and she'll be made well. When he came into the house, he permitted no one to go in except Peter, James, and John, and the father and mother of the girl. Now all wept and mourned for her. But he said... Do not weep. She is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him, knowing that she was dead. But he put them all outside, took her by the hand, and called, saying, Little girl, arise. And her spirit returned, and she arose immediately. And he commanded that she be given something. And her parents were astonished, but he charged them to tell no one what had happened. He reached out and he touched her. 
And told her, Can you see this picture? Jesus was on his way to touch a 12 year old girl when he was touched by a woman who was sick for 12 years. There's a significance here. This is something they're trying to let you know. You need to read this story. There is something going on here. Because there is no coincidences. He was on his way to touch somebody when he was touched. So Christian, hit the slide for point number two. Touch has the power to resurrect. Not just to heal and to save, but touch has the power to bring dead things back to life. Do you feel like hope has died in your life? Touch can bring it back. Just the right touch can bring it back. <clears throat> touch has the power to resurrect. Touch has the power to silence the hopeless. It says they ridiculed him. She's dead. What you got to do about it? Might as well not even show up. Yeah, watch this. One touch will shut your mouth. Can I tell you something? You got people talking about you. You got people who are discouraging you, who are discrediting you, who are who are who don't understand you. One touch can silence the crowd. One simple touch from Jesus can bring dead things back to life. She was dead. All hope was lost. Why bother the master? Let's just go home and mourn. Your only daughter has died. But one touch from Jesus flipped the script. Turned it all around. What's the dead thing in your life that you need to be resurrected? One touch can change it. But again, when we're in a society that tells us touch is bad, just live with the dead thing. You know what? Hey, sorry. Too bad, too sad. Deal with it. But Jesus is saying, no. I got a touch from that. Let's go on. Chapter 9, verse 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. One of my favorite verses. He preached them that he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. You know what Jesus said? He said, you see what I just did? You go do it. And what did he just do? He allowed himself to be touched, and he touched. And he told his disciples, now guess what? You go do it as well. Hit the slide, Christian. Point number three. We are called to do likewise. Can I tell you, COVID-19 is not the attack on the church. COVID-19 is the cover for the attack on the church. Do you know where the enemy is attacking the church? By keeping you isolated. Because the enemy knows what would happen if you started touching. And if I can keep you apart, there won't be no fire. And if there's no fire, there's no revival. Wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of wherever two or three are gathered as touching any one thing. Why do we find the scripture is so full of, if there be any sick among you, let them call upon the elders of the church. Let them come forward and they will anoint them with oil and the laying hands on of the sick. They shall be recovered, right? A touch. The gospel is brought by a touch. And we are called to go do likewise. Acts chapter 2. This is where I'm going to wrap up. I promise. I, that's why I said it across that way. Don't want to follow the way. In 15 minutes, I won't. <laughs> no. Chapter 2. Starting in verse 40. We've used these a lot during the COVID situation. But in light of what we just talked about, 
and the power of a touch, I think this it gives us more in these scriptures. Acts 2, verse 40. And with many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. There's that word sozo again. There's that word sozo again. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done among, through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and divided them amongst all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to their church daily those who were being saved. So again, we see this formula of signs, wonders, and miracles, favor, and multiplication. And it comes, starting in verse 42, in sound doctrine and fellowship. That word fellowship in the Greek is the word koinonia. You know what that word that what that means in its simplest terms? Communion. What we're about to celebrate today. They had communion. They were together. And they had communion. But we go a little further and we see that it said that they uh, uh, verse 44 now all who believed were together and had all things in common I don't remember what the Greek word actually is for that word together but it is a preposition it is a Greek preposition and you know where else it's found in Acts chapter 2 and they were all in the upper room and there appeared upon them upon their heads spoken tongues of fire that word upon is the same word so there's people who quote these scriptures as, as like some liberal communist Jesus. That Christianity is supposed to be some commune thing. It's not about being commune. It's about being connected. That word together isn't, isn't being in commune together and in community together. It's about being connected together. It's the exact same word as the Holy Spirit, the, the fire sitting on top of someone's head in the upper room. It's about the Holy Spirit connecting with the people. It's about the people connecting with each other. That touch. That point of connection. My kids love Legos. Christian used to have Tinker Toys. And he made himself a, he, he had a Kermit the Frog, stuffed Kermit the Frog. Woody, yeah, it was a stuffed Woody from Toy Story. They're like this big. And he made them. I think the Kermit the Frog was when he made the tricycle for wasn't it? No, it was for Woody. He took his Tinker Toys and he made a tricycle for him when he was like in, in kindergarten. But you know what Tinker Toys and Legos? Separate, they're nothing. They're just bricks with bumps on them. <laughs> but when you start connecting them, it's not on the way. When you start connecting them, then something beautiful comes out of them. When you start connecting them, then things start to take shape. This is what this Acts 2 verse is about. When we start connecting. When we're separate, we're just a brick with bumps. But when we're connected, then we become the body. Then we become the house. Then we become the building that the Holy Spirit can dwell. Then we become the place. Then we become the temple. Because we start connecting. And my fear is, my fear is this, is that as this wanes on and as this continues, more and more of the church has given up their ability to touch, their ability to connect. I pray for us it will never happen. I pray for us that we always stand fast and say, you know what, no. Because we are a people who are called to bring healing and salvation. We are a people who are called to just like the first song that rattled, to call, to, to call out the dry bones. To call resurrection. <coughs> Let us endeavor today 
wherever we are, wherever you're at watching online. Maybe your state has a difference in things. Maybe you're one of those states that say, hey, we're wide open and we're footloose and fancy free. Well, praise God. That still doesn't mean you're not connecting. Because can I tell you something? Before COVID happened, there was still a lot of people who needed dead things brought back to life. Amen. Before COVID happened, there was still a lot of people who needed healing. Before COVID happened, there was still a lot of people who needed some sozo, who needed some deliverance and some salvation. So COVID is not the beginning. COVID is just putting the spotlight on us. So on this day, as we press through to the greatest connection that God has ever made, when God emptied heaven into the belly of an unmarried teenage woman and came and connected with us on a personal level. So you were wondering how I can make this a Christmas message, huh? And connected with us on a level like never before. Let us pledge today to be a people of connection and touch. I was at Super One. I told the story at Carlstadt. I was at Super One yesterday. Was it yesterday or the day before? Day before. Day before. Friday. Yeah. And the checkout line was all the way to the pizza coolers. All the way to the pizza coolers. And people were grumbling and complaining. And I had read reports from the day before that people were spitting on employees and cussing employees out. Because Super One has now instituted a, you must wear a mask or don't shop here mandate. But the reason why that line was so long was because half of their staff was out with COVID. So they're thinking, well, you know what, wear a mask. <coughs> they had to cut their hours back. They close at 7 o'clock now. 7 p.m. now they close. Because they can't staff their store anymore. And so when I'm thinking about touch, this is what I said to Carl Stab. It doesn't, I'm not talking about it has to be a physical contact. Because we're talking about a spiritual thing. Jesus is showing us a physical representation of a spiritual event, right? You got people spitting on employees. So they got to wait in the line. Or have to put a piece of cloth on their face for 30 minutes while they're in a store. We could argue masks until Jesus comes back and we'll probably never get everybody to agree. But you know what I did when I got up to the line? We got our groceries, we paid. And I don't know, I've seen the lady, she's she's been my cashier before. I don't know her personally. But you know what I did? Thank you, Andrea. That was her name. I saw her name badge. Thank you, Andrea. And then she gave me my receipt, and it was all kind of it kind of got bunched up in the machine. I said, "That's not a word. It's okay. Thank you." You know what that was? That was a touch. Courtesy goes a long way. Yep, because that courtesy, that connection, that touch. Taylor was the guy who bagged our groceries. I don't know Taylor from Adam. Hey, thank you. Thanks a lot. Good job. Let's be those type of people. You know what? It's very easy to be the other type. And it's very easy to isolate and say, you know what? I'm just going to sit in the house until this is over. You know, we shop online. It's easier to get stuff shipped to our house. All that stuff, that's fine. I'm not talking about that stuff. I'm talking about we have to be that connection to a hurting world. And we can't live our life in fear. We can't do that. We have to be out and connect. We're going to get ready to take communion. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you do this in an orderly fashion. Come up and grab one of these. Take it back. The uh, top part, there's two seals on there. So if you want to start from this side over here, you can come up and grab your communion element. There, there's a, a little one that lifts up. And it opens up to get you to where your wafer is. Then you take the big piece and you peel back and it opens up the, for the juice. That's right. Nothing is wasted. Because they all go back in the bag for next time, whatever's left. I like that plan. I may actually buy another 500. Yep. 
But that's how much I bought this last time. I was gonna let them go. <laughs> Once they said they were available, I grabbed it. I grabbed the biggest box they had. <clears throat> this side over here. Remember Acts 2. Normally we read from, from Corinthians and we talk about Paul, talk about what he was. When, when I when I when it was given to me, I give to you. And he tells the the story of uh, of uh, the Last Supper. But I think that Acts two. I think that Acts two that 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 koinonia, that communion. Well, that's what this is. This is this is our ability to touch Jesus, and to have Jesus touch us. And just like our two points from the, the, the two ladies, the, 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 the woman with the issue of blood, point number one, reminds me of the bread. Because the bread is what brings healing, right? The brokenness of his body brings healing. That touch brought her healing. So as we take this bread today, Bob, where do you need to be made whole? Lily, where do you need to be made whole? Roger, Gloria. Where do you need to be made whole? And then if you take that bread, we're touching that spot. And he said, what? We just quit it all the time, right? He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. Curly the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes, we are healed. We are made whole. We have sozo, because we get to touch this part of it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you have allowed yourself to be broken and allowed yourself to be touched. Lord, today I pray that as we touch and we take and we, 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 we initiate this koinonia, this fellowship with you, that you would bring wholeness and healing to those places in our lives where we need it, in our spirit, our soul, our body our emotions, our relationships. Lord, I think of those in our prayer request today who are looking for reconciliation. Lord, one touch from you can make families whole. Lord, I thank you for that. As we take this bread, Lord, we take on the wholeness that you bring us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take the bread. I told you you were going to want the, the oyster crackers, right? It's not that bad. <laughs> it reminds me of growing up in the Episcopal Church. Yes. <laughs> and then, as we get ready to take the cup, I'm reminded of Jairus' daughter. The dead thing brought back to life. Life is in the power of the blood. is in the blood. So as we do the koinonia, as we do that fellowship and that communion with his blood, we are bringing life back into our bodies. Those dead areas of our life, those things that we thought were gone, should come back to life again. Ain't that amazing? I mean, that's incredible. I love that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you, you poured out your blood, you spilled your blood, so we could take away. Lord, I thank you that in this representation, in this, this example, this, the, the, this, this sacrament that we do to experience what you went through, so we can be connected, so we can be in proximity with you, so we can reap the benefits of the Lord, and we take this second touch, this touch that brings dead things back to life, this touch that takes, and it takes our dead spirit and brings us alive again. That those who are dead in Christ will be alive. Lord, I thank you that you are bringing us back to life. Those dead areas of our life, those dead relationships, those dead feelings, those dead emotions, you're bringing them to life. You're bringing them to life. Lord, I thank you and I praise you. In Jesus' name, let's take the cup. A little warmer than the other stuff, but <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> no.
no little people to collect the cups. <laughs> and I assured the little ones like mm. to come and do that. Koinonia. Koinonia, fellowship, communion. That joining in that sacrament where we're, we're now touching what he touched. We're experiencing what he experienced. You know, it's one of those things that was amazing. You know, I, I'll tell you this one story, and I think I'll wrap it. I didn't tell it in Carl's head. I, I just, I was just thinking about it right now. I'm thinking about this touching what he touched and experiencing uh, what they experienced in the upper room. The, the, uh, in uh, July of 2000, as I was teaching high school in Outward, California, I was privileged to go to a conference in Washington, D.C. And uh, so I'm in D.C. and I went and I, uh, I, of course, we got there a day early, so we were allowed to go tour. We didn't have to, to we got there a day before the conference started. And we stayed in a place called Crystal City, which is right outside Arlington National Cemetery. And so uh, when we got on the, the, the metro, the, the, the subway, the first stop was Arlington. And so, of course, we got off at Arlington and we went to the cemetery there. And if I ever could find the old pictures that I had, they're still in storage in California on a, on a three and a half inch floppy disk that says a lot about the time, it turns out. Um, I actually found the picture of the tombstone of David Peterson in Arlington Cemetery. Kind of freaky, but it was like it just like jumped out at me. I'm like, I gotta take a picture of that, you know. But I, I went to the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, and I got there at the changing of the guard. And of course, you know, being a veteran, and I, I am patriotic, you know, even though I'm a kingdom-minded person, I'm not anti-American by any means. But when you're there, it's like, oh my goodness. And then I walked over to John Kennedy's Eternal Flame. I wasn't alive in 63. I was born in 1970. But to see his the, the flame burning right there at his, at his, at his grave site connects you to an event, even though I wasn't alive to experience it. And then you do you're looking at his grave, you're looking at the flame, and you do a 360 around, and it's it's on a hill at Arlington, and it overlooks the entire mall all the way down to the Capitol, <coughs> and you see everything, and then. From there, I, I went over to the Lincoln Memorial, and to stand on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, and to look out onto the mall. And you know what was playing in my head? What was playing in my head was, I have a dream. That one day, black children and white children. I wasn't alive to hear Martin Luther King Jr.'s speech. But being there in the proximity, standing on the spot where it happened, looking out connected me to something beyond me. I think of those things, and I think of communion. I think that's why I love that movie, the, 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 the Chosen, so much because of the imagery it gives us at the time period. So I could close my eyes and I could get a picture of what the upper room must have looked like. I could get this image of what it must have felt like. What the bread must have been like in the market when they went to go get the bread. Where, and how they got the wine. They should, there's a scene coming up pretty soon where they're actually showing you pressing the wine. This is, you know, you're thinking, oh my goodness. As we do that, it's that same connection. It connects us to something deeper. Deeper and ancient. Than anything we can imagine. You know, people get it all the time. I, you know, hey, you know, you get people. They they, they love the tour ballparks, right? Every every place you go, they want to go to a ballpark. You know, I can remember I was I was at Candlestick Park and I watched Mark McGuire and Lon Swan on the record breaking year when he broke uh, the single season home run record. I got to I got to experience one of McGuire's home runs that year live in person. That was amazing. You were there for Hank Aaron. Uh, I watched. I watched Barry Bonds launch one 500 feet in the center field. 500 feet. It hit off the back wall of the concession stand, <laughs> like that. So th those are things that you, you connect to. So now, if, if ever I was to go back to AT and T Park, that's the one, even though he's not playing there anymore. That's one of the first things I think about it. When I look over to that area, I watched the ball hit that wall right there. 
You know, you're connected. That's communion with folks. That's the depth of koinonia. It's not just, yeah, we did it together and we, we say we do this sacrament. No, it's that the depth that we get to it, that, that koinonia is a fellowship that goes deeper. We're part of it. We're, we're part of it. We're the alumni of, of, a, of a great society, of a fraternity of believers, of people that Hebrews 11 said changed the world. And Hebrews 11 says that the world was not even worthy of having. We just fellowship with them. We just numbered our names with them. That's what Koinonia is. <coughs> that right there is what this world needs. Is believers who have experienced God. Not just know God. But who have experienced him and had that fellowship and that touch from him and are willing to touch and are willing to be touched. As we leave today, let's be those people who will touch and be touched at every opportunity. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. We thank you that you have given us this ability to connect. This ability to, to connect with you, to connect with something deeper than ourselves. Lord, I thank you for what you're going to do in our lives. I thank you for the power that you're going to release to us through the fires that are going to be started through our touch. Lord, I thank you that it won't be contained, but it'll spread. And we will see revival in the land. Lord, I thank you that healing, deliverance, and resurrection are coming on the heels of a touch. Lord, for those who are watching who say, I, Pastor, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I'm still lost. I'm just going to tell you right now. Reach out and touch. Reach out and touch. The Lord is there and ready to say, you know what? I understand you had a problem. I'm here to heal you. All you got to do is admit this lady had to admit that she had an issue. And then she had to admit to herself, the only way to solve this issue is Jesus. Then she had to go to Jesus, and she had to touch Jesus. And then she had to allow Jesus to turn around and say, you're made whole. That's all you got to do is just admit that, you know what, I'm a sinner. And I need Jesus. And I'll tell you, there may be a throng around him, there may be a crowd around him, but he is ready, willing, and able, and waiting <coughs> to feel your touch. And you will be made whole. In Jesus' name. Amen. Christian, hit the next slide for me, please, buddy. Kingdom Building 101. Here we go. Let's go to the last. We must be spirit-empowered. The Holy Spirit matters. The Bible is absolute truth. It is our only blueprint. It's, it's, it's what we got, folks. We can't go off nothing else. Let's go. Our character matters. If we speak it, we must live it. Today is really important. If we say we're going to be a people of to, who, to touch and be touched, then we got to do it. Next one, last one, we must stay on course. Keep on task. Even though the throngs may press about us, we got to keep on doing it. Next, it's all about hope. It's about bringing hope to the hopeless. Amen? Amen. Like a woman with an issue of blood. We lost everything. Last slide. And it's all about the movement. We don't want to just start a fire here. We want the fire to spread. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hey, may the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he make his face shine upon you. May he establish you. May he forever give you peace. If you receive that, say amen. amen. If those of you who are brave enough to come back for some whiteboard lesson on doctrine tonight, I can make doctrine fun, trust me. Uh, I will see you at 6.30. And we may roll out our new uh, our new coffee uh, we got a coffee shipment in from a place called Armor of God Coffee we are looking at using them as our official coffee for our youth coffee bar and we got uh, pecan pie harvest blend peppermint and we got Christmas peppermint coffee yeah I'm talking about 
<laughs> Can you imagine a little shot of chocolate I'm syrup and that peppermint coffee right on top of it with some French vanilla creamer? A peppermint mocha, just like that. So we may have those available for you to try tonight. We also have dark roast, medium roast, and for the James seconds of the world, we have extra caffeinated. <laughs> so, God bless, and we will see you tonight at 6.30.